As with most of my anime videos, this one definitely has a bit of spoilers from the manga. If you take the name Ragnarok, convert it to Japanese Katakana, and then reverse it, the first three characters you get out actually spell out Krona. As I'm sure most of us know, Medusa isn't exactly the first in line for the Best Mother of the Year award. After all, the reason Krona is, well, Krona, can be blamed solely on Medusa's own wicked ambitions. She is responsible for pretty much all of Krona's abilities, which includes his inseparable bond with Ragnarok. Originally, Ragnarok was just an ordinary demon weapon before being melted down into a pot of black blood, which Medusa eventually transferred into Krona's body. Having this new blood not only allows Krona the ability to spawn his weapon at any given moment, but also protects him from physical damage while also providing him with a degree of healing. As a weapon, Ragnarok takes on the form of a Scandinavian broadsword, which is a sword that was prevalent within Northern and Western Europe during the early Middle Ages, more commonly known today as the Viking Age Sword. The Vikings also believed in a series of events known as the Day of Ragnarok, which is basically their version of Doomsday. I won't go too in depth, mainly because I can't pronounce a lot of these names, but in a nutshell, a number of higher beings have beef with one another another and shit is going to fucking go down, ultimately resulting in the destruction of the world itself. Given Ragnaros' role to aid Krona in his quest to become a Kishin, I do believe the name fits him pretty well. If you've watched my previous Soul Eater videos, you'll know by now that the manga and the anime have some pretty major differences. Well, needless to say, this is especially true for Krona's character. Unlike in the anime where Krona is shown to take sides with the DWMA, Krona actually remains a reoccurring antagonist up until around the very end of the manga, forced to continue his efforts to become a Kishin. He was so powerful at one point that he managed to absorb Asura during the battle that took place on the moon. Although this was only temporary with Asura eventually regaining control and absorbing him instead. However, unlike the anime where the Kishin is beaten for good, it is actually Krona who manages to put down Asura within the manga. Well, sort of. After reconnecting with Maka, Krona chooses to sacrifice himself by engulfing the moon's surface with a wave of black blood ultimately sealing himself alongside Asura in order to be able to protect his friends. How ironic that in the very end, it took someone becoming a Kishin to take down a Kishin. Shortly after the conclusion of the battle that had taken place on the moon, it is revealed that those who had taken part were affected by a new type of madness, one which ultimately resulted from Krona having become a Kishin, simply named the Madness of Boobs. You probably think I'm joking, but let me explain. Within the final chapter of the manga, it is shown that the majority of characters who had taken part in the battle against the Kishin now seem to have a stronger fascination with female breasts, with many stating that they would repeatedly think and or feel the urge to grab or play with them. Maka, Soul, Blackstar, Kid, Liz, and Patty are all shown to be affected by it. According to Death the Kid, this madness came into being due to Krona's longing of a mother's love, which he had never experienced, with the breast being a symbol for motherhood. What the fuck? Is Krona a boy or a girl? I know I've mentioned this in previous videos, but for whatever reason, a number of you guys just seem unsatisfied with the answer and seem really interested in learning what's really hidden under that mysterious black robe. You pervs. But I mean, he has to be one or the other, right? Well, a pretty common argument that people like to make is that Krona is a girl within the manga and a guy in the anime. Although this is not necessarily true within both the original Japanese versions. You see, in the Japanese language, it's a pretty common thing to use non-gender specific pronouns to refer to other humans, whereas in English, we generally refer to specific genders such as he or she, and avoid calling someone an it, which would be highly offensive. Due to this, when the series was being translated, those in charge of doing so were forced to decide on one or the other. In fact, you may have noticed me referring to Krona as he throughout this entire video, simply because, well, I don't know what else to call him. My point being here is that Krona's gender has never been addressed by Atsushi Okubo. So what can we do? Well, we can look at the facts and use what we do know in order to predict whether he is most likely to be male or female. Of course, until we get an official confirmation from the series creator, we can never be 100% sure. 
Now believe me, there is a lot that we can go over for the sake of this topic, but for this video I decided to narrow it down and focus on evidence that I have come across so far that best supports both arguments. Starting off with what makes him a boy? Well, in the Japanese versions of Soul Eater, Krona is shown to have a tendency to refer to himself as Boku, which is a way to refer to oneself commonly used more by boys than girls. Then there is his first encounter with Maka where he constantly repeats that he doesn't know how to deal with girls but that he has no problem fighting boys. And the final supporting evidence is that in episode 31, during the party scene, Krona is shown to be wearing a suit at the party while all other female characters are wearing dresses or at least something more feminine. As for what can make him a girl, well he is shown to be wearing a dress in all of his flashbacks which is pretty self-explanatory. The way that Krona also carries his books within the anime may provide us with hints as he holds them up to his chest and his front similar to how Maka does. But the best supporting piece of evidence in my opinion has to be Krona's overall design. The way that he is being constantly sexualized within the manga along with his outfit that begins to resemble a dress as the series goes on. Not to mention, well I mean come on guys, them hips don't laugh. In the end though, it seems that there is a lot of evidence that points him to being either one or the other but until we get an official confirmation, it seems that this never ending war of YouTube comments won't be going away anytime soon. Personally, I never really cared too much to begin with, nor did I really think about it, but simply going off the evidence that I've just presented to you guys along with the information I found scattered around the internet, I believe it's more likely that he is a she. But I say we put it to a vote, I left some comments down below, go thumbs up the one you think is right. Thank you guys for watching this video and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know you guys have been asking for this one for a while now, but I just didn't know how to edit it the way I wanted to. So that was the main reason it took so long. But I know how much you guys love these Soul Eater videos, so if you can get this one to 500 likes, I will put out the next one. Based on the videos I've done in the past, I'm pretty sure we can get there in no time. If you guys made it to the end of this video, go ahead and drop the word Corona down below to let me know. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you could tap that like button if you enjoyed, and subscribe for future videos. If you have an idea for a top 10, leave a comment down below, I make top 10s on just about anything. But with that being said, I'll thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.